Hello friends, once again welcome to my channel and today we will discuss the test procedure of finding sand equivalent value of fine aggregate as given in IS 2720 part 37 or ASTM D2419. This term sand equivalent expresses the concept that most granular soils and fine aggregates are mixtures of desirable coarse particles like sand and generally undesirable clay or plastic fines and dust. This test assigns an empirical value to the relative amount, fineness and character of clay-like material present in the test specimen. Although controlled amount of fines and dust can improve some characteristics of asphalt or concrete mixes, but too much fines will negatively affect the behavior of the materials. Excessive fines increase the total surface area of the solids in concrete and will reduce the workability. In asphalt, high fines contribute to a loss of adhesion between asphalt binder and aggregates and would require more binder. And therefore, a minimum value of SEV is specified to limit the permissible quantity of clay like fines in aggregates. For example, Sand equivalent value for the fine aggregate to be used in bituminous layer should at least be 50. And this is a unique test and a very quick test that can be run in 40 minutes to measure the proportion of clay like fines in granular soils and aggregates. The procedure can be performed in a fully equipped laboratory or at a remote field location for on the spot quality control checks. The apparatus which are required for conducting this test is graduated cylinder of transparent acrylic plastic having an inside diameter of 32 mm, a height of 430 mm and it is graduated up to 380 mm at 2 mm interval. And these graduations starts at the bottom and it also requires a rubber stopper to fit in the mouth of this cylinder. The cylinder used here are unique. Instead of volumetric divisions, they have graduations every 2 mm. An irrigator tube, which is made of 6.4 mm outside diameter stainless steel with one end closed to form a wedge shaped point, and two holes of 1 mm diameter are drilled literally through the flat side of this wedge near the point. And this tube helps transfer solution to the cylinder. It is attached to the latex tubing of siphon assembly. The siphon assembly consists of a 4 liter bottle having a 5 mm outside diameter copper band, tube of 410 mm, and then a rubber tubing with a pinch clamp, a blow tube consisting of 50 mm of 500, 5 mm diameter copper tube and 50 mm of 3 mm inside diameter rubber tube and a two hole rubber stopper here to fit the graduated cylinder. This assembly controls the transfer of working solution into the graduated cylinder and the irrigation of the sample. The weighted foot assembly is immersed into the graduated cylinder to take the sand reading of the test sample. This foot sinks through the upper portion of clay sized particles and comes to rest on top of the coarser sand friction. Then you need 3-4 measuring cans of 90 plus minus 5 ml capacity, a funnel to transfer the sample to the cylinder, 2-4 liter bottles to store stock a solution and working solution as I showed you in siphon assembly, then sieve and a shaker. Now this shaker can be of mechanical type like this or it can be a hand shaker also. In case of mechanical shaker a throw of 200 millimeter and a operating speed of 175 cycles per minute is required. In case of manual sand equivalent shaker the, the sample is fitted here and this is rotated by hand. It should be capable of producing an oscillation motion at the rate of 100 complete cycles in 45 seconds with a hand assisted half stroke length of 125 millimeter or it can be done by hand also. 
the preparation of solution two solutions are prepared for making the test one is stock calcium chloride solution which is prepared by dissolving 480.4 gram of calcium chloride in 2 liters of distilled water then this solution is cooled and filtered through ready pleated rapid filtering filter paper then add 2179 grams of glycerin and 49.7 gram of formaldehyde to the filtered solution mix it well and dilute to 4 liters now this is the stock calcium chloride solution the working calcium chloride solution is prepared by diluting 90 ml of this stock calcium chloride solution to 4 liter with water and distilled water or demineralized water can be used for the normal preparation of working solution the procedure can be explained in four or five steps the first step is take 1500 gram of aggregate sample passing 4.75 mm is sieve and break down any lumps of material in the coarser fraction to pass the 4.75 mm sieve and all fines attached to particles retained on 4.75 mm sieve should also be included in the sand equivalent sample the sample for testing can be prepared by any of the two procedures the procedure one is air dry in this case fill the 85 ml tins with air dry material and tap the tin while filling to get the most possible material into the tin tilt the tin and fill the material by pushing it into the tin by hand and tap it continuously so that you get the maximum possible material into the tin the second procedure is that we pre wet the specimen wet the sample by adding water and to obtain a condition where the sample is just wet enough for form a cast in your hand when squeezed like this after proper wetness is obtained split the sample by placing it on a cloth or on a plastic sheet and rolling it by picking up the corner of the sheet and lifting it to the diagonally opposite corner when the material appears homogeneous fill the tins with the material in both cases whether you prepare the specimen using procedure 1 or procedure 2 it is important to dry the sample at constant weight at 110 degrees centigrade and then cool it to room temperature after that fit the siphon assembly to a 4 liter bottle of working calcium chloride solution place this bottle on a shelf which is 915 plus minus 25 mm above the working surface siphon 100 plus minus 2 mm of working calcium chloride solution into graduated cylinder now this is 4 inch or 100 mm and it is siphoned through this irrigation tube which is placed in the cylinder pour one of the test specimen into the graduated cylinder using the funnel to avoid spillage and at the same time tap the bottom of the cylinder sharply on the palm of the hand several times to release air bubbles and to promote thorough wetting of the specimen allow the wetted specimen and cylinder to stand undisturbed for 10 minutes at the end of 10 minutes of soaking period place the stopper on the cylinder and then loosen the material from the bottom by partially inverting the cylinder and shaking it simultaneously after loosening the material from the bottom of the cylinder shake the cylinder and contents by any of these three methods you can use mechanical method or it can be by manual shaker or by hand when you are using mechanical method place the stoppered cylinder on the mechanical sand equivalent shaker set the time and allow the machine to shake the cylinder and contents for 45 seconds when manual shaker method is used then you secure the stoppered cylinder to the shaker and shake it for 100 strokes with half stroke length of 125 mm plus minus 5 mm
it can also be done by hand and in this case you hold the cylinder in a horizontal position and shake it vigorously in a horizontal linear motion from end to end shake the cylinder 90 cycles in approximately 30 seconds using a throw of 230 plus minus 25 millimeter after the shaking operation set the cylinder upright on the work table and remove the stopper and after removing this stopper irrigate the sample to remove all fines from walls of the cylinder and also to bring all clay particles in suspension raise the irrigator slowly without shutting off the flow so that the liquid level is maintained at 381 millimeter that is 15 inch while the irrigator is being withdrawn allow the cylinder and contents to stand undisturbed for 20 minutes plus minus 15 seconds and this time should be started immediately after withdrawing the irrigator tube now determine the clay reading this will be the position of three uh, materials here the bottom part will be sand or sedimented aggregate the middle part will be suspended clay and the upper part will be flocculation solution or working solution so at the end of the 20 minute period read and record the level of the top of the sediment column and this is the clay reading and if no clear line of demarcation has formed allow the sample to stand undisturbed for another 10 minutes and then read the clay reading if still it is not very clearly visible then you should repeat the test this will be the situation that this is the sand and this is the suspended clay layer so this is to be read as the clay reading after the clay reading has been taken place the weighted foot assembly over the cylinder and gently lower the assembly until it comes to rest on the sand as the weighted foot comes to rest on the sand tip the assembly towards the graduation on the cylinder until the indicator touches the inside of the cylinder subtract 250 millimeter from the level indicated by the extreme top edge of the indicator and record this value as the sand reading now when taking the sand reading take, take care not to press down on the weighted foot assembly since this could give an erroneous reading if clay or sand readings fall between 2 millimeter graduations record the level of the higher graduation as the reading now calculations for sand equivalent value this is given by this equation sand reading divided by clay reading multiplied by 100 if the calculated sand equivalent is not a whole number report it as the next higher whole number for example if sand reading is 88 and clay reading is 213 then sand equivalent value will be 88 upon 213 multiplied by 100 that is 41.3 and it should be reported as 42. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please write in the comment box.